On March 14th, 2024, KGPC aired an uh, episode, I believe it was number 65 of the President's Desk. And in this particular clip, we welcomed in uh, Laney College biology professor Emily Kwok, uh, who's really kind of an up and coming star in biology and biomanufacturing and someone who's come through uh, the Peralta Community College District's faculty diversity internship program. I uh, thought it was an engaging discussion as we went a couple different directions, just talking about uh, life as a Laney College faculty member and then also the discipline of biology. Hope you're enjoying these videos as well as our broadcasts. Uh, be sure at all times to tune in to kgpc969.org and go to the president's desk under current shows. And uh, as always, thank you for listening and, and viewing us also on Peralta TV on Sundays from one to two o'clock. Take care. Welcome to the President's Desk on 96.9 FM, KGPC, and Peralta Television, where Laney College President, Dr. Rudy Besikov, speaks with community members, colleagues, and student leaders. This program is supported by Technical Director Felicia Bridges, who co-hosts along with Laney College Journalism major Randy Cross and President Dr. Rudy Besikoff. Pull up a chair and join me, Felicia, and Randy at the President's Desk today. Randy, welcome back. Tell our listeners how they can get in touch right, with us. Welcome back. Yes, you can email us at laneypodcast at peralta.edu. Like us on Facebook at Laney College President's Desk Podcast. And follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Laney Podcast. You can also find selected interviews and content from the show on YouTube by subscribing to the Laney College President's Desk channel. This is Rudy Besikoff, and I'm the proud president of Laney College, a pillar that has been serving the greater Oakland community since 1927 and has been known as Laney now for more than 65 years and where, once again, spring semester is free. Great teams are what it's all about, and my office is no exception. Uh, in addition to my co-hosts, I want to recognize Elena Sanchez, new to the president's office, who now helps us booking guests for the show, as well as Zaya, Raya Zion, our show contributor. But getting things kicked off today is my co-host, Felicia Bridges. Felicia, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Dr. Rudy, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing fine. <laughs> she actually just came over from the Mongolian students and employees put on a Lunar New Year celebration on the quad today. Oh, nice. Uh, which was great. And nice. so just came from that. And actually, I think it's a good segue. I'm going to go straight to our Partners of Laney feature where we talk about both on-campus and off-campus opportunities, both in industry and other places for careers for our students. First, I'm pleased to announce that fellow Oakland Rotary Club member Owen Krebs with Yellow Jacket HVAC came to our campus actually last week to get in touch with us, including our HVAC faculty and staff, letting us know that they need people. They need heat pump installers and other things. So certainly uh, we'll give some contact information in just a moment, but that's an opportunity for our students. Also March 8th in Oakland, Chinatown, they, from one to three o'clock, they'll be partnering with us to put on an entrepreneurship fair. So you certainly wanna go ahead and get down to Oakland, Chinatown, which is always a pleasure. And then I also want to send a special shout out. Felicia, you might remember Joe Fotu with Kuberg. He was a yes, Laney College I alum. Do. Yep. I do. Well, I was invited on the 26th of February to ribbon cutting at their new facility in San Leandro. But I was certainly not a VIP there if you looked at some of the other guests. In fact, Secretary of Energy, as in Biden's Secretary of Energy, oh, Jennifer really? Granholm was there okay. as the guest speaker. Oh. And sustainable energy, green transportation was on the table. And of course, you know, everybody knows, for example, Tesla and right. hybrids and all that. But did you know now that a lot of that battery energy is now going to aviation, that's, airplanes? So that's something I learned about, which was kind of interesting. That will be interesting. Yeah. That, I don't know. That kind of sounds scary. So anyway, <laughs> all of that is going on. That's all right. You know what? It'll get to us at a time when it hopefully won't be scary. Won't be scary. <laughs> and something also not scary is the April 27th CTE Open House. How's that for a segue on the Laney College Quad, which will be happening from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's a Saturday. We want the community to come out and show up as they always do. 
You know, putting together this update is Raya Zion, our employment services specialist. And if our listeners or viewers have questions, they should reach out to her at rzion at peralta.edu. And Randy, what's the phone number for Raya? Phone number for Raya is 510-464-3530. And one more time. That is 510-464-3530. All right. So we were talking about energy and sustainability. I I think this is a perfect opportunity to welcome for the first time at the president's desk, Professor Emily Kwok. Emily, what kinds of uh, sustainable energy things are you doing now? Well, I currently drive a Prius Prime. All right. To me, it's about going into the idea of being able to let go of gas, but I can't really and so be able to charge my car. Okay, so that's a hybrid then. So it's like fully chargeable? Um, so it's a, it's a mixture, oh, okay. basically. I could add in gas and I mm-hmm. can also charge. It's kind of like a more advanced version of hybrid. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, now, I would never ad- admit to this in a public setting, such as a radio show, but I have been on occasion in a Tesla when somebody guns it and it you know has that super acceleration. Do hybrid vehicles have that or not necessarily? Oh, you feel it. If you're a first-time driver for EV, you definitely learn a process of how to drive. It's definitely different than gas driving. Okay. Do you ever go to the charging stations? I currently have the opportunity to charge in a garage. I live with my parents, and I just charge there. All right. I had one of those old Nissan Leafs. They had like 2012 or 13 and had a range of maybe 70 miles, (laughs) which meant I was plugging in all over Los Angeles and Orange County and making lots of friends at those (laughs) charging stations. But how's the semester going? The semester's been going pretty great. Happy Asian New Year. We just celebrated. I'm so happy you brought that up during our announcements. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. What are you teaching this semester? Uh, This semester, I'm currently teaching for the biomanufacturing program, which is housed in the biology department at Laney College. And the two courses I teach is Bio 72, which is biotech instrumentation. And it is a dual enrollment course. And my Uh, second... Dual enrollment. What's that? Oh, dual enrollment is where we have a contract with AUS and AUSD, Alameda Unified School District High School. And the specific high school is called Ensignal High School. And the students come to our campus and they take a regular college class. So the class is actually at the Encinal campus? No. Oh, it's at Laney. The students oh, come to Laney because that's fantastic. we have the equipment at Laney. Okay, I'm glad I asked that. Typically, dual enrollment classes are on the high school campus, but it's great to see we're pushing envelopes and bringing students onto Do our they, facility. they bust the students over or it's on them to get here on their own? You know? Treat the students like a college student. Right. So they take the bus, they have their parents drop them off. They have, um, most of them are juniors and seniors, so they're also on the road too, guys. Gotcha. <laughs> that, sounds pre- that sounds pretty cool. We also have a, KGBC has a partnership with Encino High School, and they provide us with the news. So right. I like our relationship with Encino, and it sounds like you're doing some really good work. I can just add in one point where one of my students are actually part of that in the classroom. That's um, fantastic, yes. yeah. Walk us through a typical day for you as a, as a college professor. So as a college professor, typical day, I wake up like everyone. I get ready to go to work, like packing my lunch, making a cup of coffee or tea. And I arrive on campus. And from campus, I walk from the parking lot. And this is, I'm talking about Laney College. I'm walking from the parking lot into our amazing campus where we see everything every day. I get the smells of culinary program baking. I do go to the cafeteria for hot water. And then I make my way into my office. And in my office, I start off the day by using the Calm app, C-A-L-M. And I listen to a seven-minute story before starting the workday. And to me, it's about setting the tone for the entire day. I believe that positivity everywhere will help make your life a better day. So by starting that off, it helps me to improve my teaching styles every day. After the Calm app, I go into office hours, so from around 8.30 to 9.30 this semester. And the reason why I do it so early is because I'm catering towards my high school students. My high school students have a free block at that same time. So that's why I thought like office hours would be perfect at that time if they choose to come. Making yourself available, that's fantastic. Yes. Great. You know, I'm just looking at classes you've taught. I've noticed microbiology has been part of it as well. Uh, now, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the person that took my biology classes, did the frog dissection, did all that stuff, and then decided to be a language major. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit, for somebody like me, 
Tell us about microbiology. What is it and why is it so important? So microbiology is actually everyday life and you can't even imagine it. Um, so I usually ask my students, do you use a dishwasher? In the laboratory classroom, we usually use something similar to a dishwasher to go ahead and sterilize or clean um, the utensils or equipment we're using in lab. And usually my hook for the classroom is for the regular college student, do you drink? Because that's part of our everyday lives. Um, something like a beverage like beer or wine is actually the world's oldest biotech product where we use little microbes mm. um, to make it. And that's called the fermentation process. Fermentation. So that's microbiology. Wow, that's makes it hit close to home for probably several of our listeners. <laughs> I was just thinking that that's a great way to pull students into into yeah. the major. Yes. It's just like you can wear beer and wine. Yes. Right. Let's say I am sitting on the fence about what to major in. What would be your pitch for biology or for e or even for biomanufacturing? I would say go explore it. If you don't explore it, you never know. So just try it out. See if it fits. If not, it's okay. Okay. Excellent. What got you into it? Ooh, um, so I was actually a student here at the Peralta Community College System. And this actually was a lot of years ago. And I was that person that went to go ahead and failed chemistry. And after failing chemistry, I decided to go take other science courses like physics, organic chemistry, biology, and of all the courses, I found biology to really resonate with me. And in particular, I really do enjoy lab. So I took Bio 75 here at Laney College, which I currently teach. And I fell in love with everything that happens in a lab. Reading the standard operating procedure, knowing the batch record. Um, I took one course here and that made me think that I have a major now. It's going to be biotechnology. So mm -hmm. after finishing here, I went off to Davis. I majored in biotech, specializing in fermentation microbiology and doing research in the lab. So that's how I wow. started off. Did you ever get to Woodstock's Pizza when you were in Davis? Yes. Okay. Yes. Got, that's, that's a must. <laughs> I was going to ask. You said you went ahead and failed chemistry. Did you not like it? or It's not that I don't like it. Um, so with chemistry, I had to take it. And because I had to take it, I didn't do so good. Mm, so from yeah. that mentality, I do understand that some courses, I'm not always going to get an A. If I get the C, I pass it so I can take another course that I really wanted to take. Wow. How about biomanufacturing? That's probably something where maybe there's more of a degree of separation in terms of knowledge with, with the general public. What, what can you tell us about biotechnology, biomanufacturing? Actually, back to the story about beer. Okay. Beer is the first. I sense a theme today, product. Felicia. I, yeah. um, so thinking about beer being the first biotech product, biotechnology is everywhere. Um, so it's just a big umbrella. And you can think about it in very simple terms, like when you're in your own kitchen and you found the perfect recipe for a cookie, for example, and it's your special recipe, you're going to go ahead and want to share it with the world. And with that, you're going to go through a lot of research and development. And to make food, like a cookie, um, okay for the public, it goes through approval processes like, I don't know, Food Drug Administration, FDA. Right. Mm -hmm. And then when you need to mass manufacture it, so like Ghirardelli making their um, box cookies, you want to make it safe for the public, and that's what biomanufacturing is. So... What a student coming in, what kind of classes can they expect to take? What's the what's the day to day rigor going to be like if you're a bioman major? For a bioman major at Laney College, you would um, start off with our introduction to biomanufacturing. So it could be bio 75, bio 76 or bio 78. And then you go into more advanced classes. And here at Laney, we're going to go ahead and focus in on using fermentation. Wow. Uh, we have the bioreactors that you see probably growing all the microbes to help to get an end product. So at the end of the day, you're producing something to help someone. 
Wow. So that, that intro course, what you've described is fascinating. And before we move on to some of the other coursework, I know Randy has something very important to tell our listeners. Yes. I just want to remind you that you are listening to the president's desk heard on 96.9 KGPC. Check us out at KGPC969.org and also on Peralta TV. So you, you take... The intro course, you keep studying. What are some kind of hands-on learning experiences that a student can anticipate in future classes? So some of the hands-on learning experiences is being able to read a standard operating procedure. So like basically a protocol. In a biomanufacturing company, they expect their employees to go ahead and be able to look at a protocol, perform the tasks, and at the end of the day, be able to communicate and collaborate with their teams. So in my classroom, in my classroom this semester, I always have the students every week make up new teams. Each person is going to be have or have a different role. And the roles could be like team lead, um, note taker, lab technician. And the students will go ahead and change roles throughout the entire semester, change teams throughout the entire semester so wow. that they can be able to collaborate with anyone they work with. Is that collaboration something people can expect in the work setting as well? Yes. So biomanufacturing is also a career technical ed course. So therefore, we want to prepare our students for their careers. And in my world of high school students, their career next step will be to the four-year college. If we're talking technology, I'm sure people would think the name's Apple and then, of course, Microsoft. How about biomanufacturing? Who's out there kind of as our major industry partners? Genentech. Bayer is housed really close to here. Um, we have startups like Pau Bio, Geltor in the Emeryville area. In Alameda Island, there are a few um, startup companies there, of which like Science XYZ, I got to tour that place last semester. Okay. I'm going to preface my question, of course, by sending a shout out to our partners with Alameda Unified School District, as well as Oakland Unified School District, just for the ongoing partnership we've had with our dual enrollment classes. But I'll go ahead and ask you, What's it like for high school students who take college? And then at the same time, what's it like for you as a professor teaching high school college students? So for a high school student taking my course, I give them the same rigor I would give any college student. I follow the course outline of record to teach. And for me, um, I do understand that high school students and college students have a different mindset. And I have to be a little bit more on the disciplining end for that mindset with the high school students so that they know the value of education. Because at the end of the day, I do believe that education is meant to be shared. And some students, if they don't think it's important to them, I ask them, why are they here? And I will point it out. I will be the bad guy in class um, because I would like to teach them the best. So I'm a biotech major, or at least I want to be. I'm a student. What are the foundational courses that I need to take in order to really to major in in biomanufacturing? So you'd start off with um, biology courses and you'd also go into microbiology courses, which is a little bit more intense. And then you'll see, um, actually before I lie, um, you'd have to take chemistry before going into microbiology. That's a prereq that we have here. And um, afterwards, you can go ahead and take more advanced level classes um, and it is your choice to go ahead and transfer to a four year or to start working in a biotech company. One of the advantages of having a student co-host is that I can go ahead and ask this question. Randy, science classes at Laney College, what, what have you taken? What have I taken so far? I'm actually, right now, I'm in physical geography. I don't know if that's considered science. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, it is. Yeah. But yep, that's the only one so far. Is it Professor Razan? No. Or is it Schwartz or who's your? Who's your... Uh... I have Swartz. Oh, okay. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, good. So, Emily, I know you came up to us and, you know, just very impressive as, as I got to interview you and bring you on board, but I understand you came through the Faculty Diversity Internship Program. Could you tell our listeners a little bit about that and how it brings people into the faculty ranks in the Peralta Community Colleges? 
So FDIP is a great community to be a part of. Um, as a student, I applied through a Google search. I found the program off of Google. And you get to go through a lot of presentations to prepare you to become a faculty member. Um, I went through a Master's of Science program where I just learned how to do research, present my work, and collect data. But as a faculty role, it's a little bit different, and that's what FDIP FDIP did for me. Okay, so can you tell us what FDIP is? <laughs> oh, I'm a bad teacher. Oh, <laughs> uh, actually, faculty diversity internship program. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, no problem. That's okay. We, yeah. <laughs> no. Um, what's it meant to you, just in terms of your preparation? So what FDIP has meant for me is that I got to get very close with a mentor. And through mentorship, I believe I was able to excel as an instructor. My mentor is currently my colleague now and also on my TRC committee. And um, That's your tenure committee. Oh, okay. Yes. So that's, that's pretty high stakes. Okay. Well, I think having that connection there has been something great. So that, that's wonderful. Can you stick around for a few minutes? Uh, we're yes. going to welcome in our next guest, but uh, just, you know, along the way, you know, kind of building up a podcast and everything, we, you kind of try to go some interesting directions. And I think this is, a, this is a new one for the president's desk. And 